Hello YouTube and fellow DC Comic fans, I'm Keith OneShot, and today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do a live dramatic reading of Batman Detective Comics number 977. We are going to start this off a little different. This is live, no breaks, no takes, just one shot, doing it up, reading the book. Okay, we start this story off in an Ivy League university a few years from now. We see Tim Drake sitting on a laptop. And one of his friends walks up to him and says, Tim Drake, Earth to Tim Drake, do you copy? Then Tim says, Ugh, sorry, I was deep in it. Then his friend says, Professor Palmer finally stumped you with his white dwarf equation, huh? Then Tim says, No, not at all. I think I actually might have found a more direct proof. But that's not really it either. It's more how I got there. I must have spent six hours just running it through my mind, over and over again. I never used to have that much time to, well, put my mind to anything. Then we see the two walking through a hallway, and Tim Drake's friend says, Eek, I still think you could take in a movie every now and then. You've missed all my Terror Tuesdays this year. Then Tim says, After some of the things I've seen, I really can't imagine having fun, or watching people die. Then the friend says, Every now and then you say something that makes it sound like you were some kind of teenage super spy. Then Tim says, Want to hear about the time I went to another dimension? Then a friend says, Oh, shut the hell up. We then see another friend walk out of a room and say, Drake! Then Tim says, Valentine, what's wrong? Have you seen the news? Gotham's been declared... Gotham's been redeclared a no man's land. They're finally doing it. The president just signed the order. They're moving in, a, they're moving in on against them now. The order says dead or alive. This is the end of Batman. We then see on the news, Gotham City is being attacked by these huge bat ships in the sky, which is ironic that uh, they're attacking them. That's either Batman's defenses or it's the colony uh, who is attacking them. We see it on live on the news, on CBM. Then we see Tim Drake running through the hallway, and his friend says, Tim, Tim, where are you going? Then Tim runs into his room and says, She can't do this. She can't just let this happen. Then, she f then he goes and reaches and finds his Red Robin suit, and I'm sure he puts it on. We then go to Gotham, where these flying bat ships are hovering over Wayne Manor. Then they say over their overcoms, Bruce Wayne, we are here on order of the President of the United States. You will deactivate all of your defense defensive weaponaries, remove all experimental technology from your body, and exit the mansion with your hands up. We then see in the Batcave, it's an old man, Bruce Wayne, wearing his gray suit with the blue cape with his mask off and he says make me then he says brother i status then brother i says upload at 90 at 47 percent then bruce says reroute backup drivers to the overload keep pushing we then see the attack force from the colony which kind of looks like the soldiers from nightwing the new order and they're attacking the door of uh, wayne manor and batwoman is making her way in she then points at the grandfather clock and tells them the grandfather clock then we see an explosion and more soldiers move into the building then a button is pressed that cave defenses are activating then we see a boom they come into the cave they're fighting batman and batman's fighting back then kate kane shoots bruce in the back blam what a bitch then kate says with her mask off bruce how could you let how could you have let it come to this you knew who they would send when you activated the, when you activated the satellite again I'm not here because I want to be. I'm here because you pushed me. You can still surrender. Then Bruce says, You know damn well that's never going to happen. Then she shoots him again in the arm. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Then Kate says, Colony Commander to Earth to Eagle One. The target is down. Thank you, Mr. President. Then we see a broom and a crack and it's Tim Drake in his Red Robin suit. Then he says, What the hell have you done? Then Kate says, what I had to, Tim. I did exactly what I had to do. We then see Tim screaming at her, but it was all a protocol from Ulysses uh, Armstrong showing Tim Drake in the current day this scenario. He then says to Tim, pretty gruesome, huh? Then Tim says to Ulysses, I don't understand, Ulysses. What the hell did I just see? Then Ulysses smiles and says, you just saw the future, your future. Look. I don't have all the details, just the files that were built into the costume of your future self when he visited our timeline. I'm missing context. 
but the important beats still hit, don't they? Then Tim says, Why are you showing me this? Ulysses then says, I told you that already. I want to help you. Come on, buddy. Keep up. Then Tim says, This place. And Ulysses says, I wasn't working for the colony for chump change. You know weapons development is, a lucr is lucrative as hell, right? Then as they walk through the facility, Ulysses says, That let me buy some of the most in ingenious weapons ever designed by man. And I mean the prototypes. The originals. The one where you can feel the heart that heart went into the making them. Then Tim says, it's impressive. Ulysses then says, see, I knew we'd be friends. Knew it from the second I got, I first got my hands on something you built. Batman's all utility, you know? All, all about what's the fastest way to take down the bad guy. There's no finesse, but you're an artist, a dreamer, just like me. Then Tim says, look Ulysses, don't take this the wrong way. But all of us got to... But all of us... This has a lot to process. And I still can't figure out what's in this all for you. Then Ulysses says, A few weeks ago, when I cracked the files, I saw the history of the future, and I wasn't in it. Another version of me went head-to-head -head with you and Batman a few times, and then, more or less, fell off the face of the Earth. Whew! Then, uh, as they walk through the facility, Ulysses continues to say, No offense, Tim. But I have slightly higher aspirations than being a so-called run-in in your, in your rogues gallery. Then as I walk up the stairs, Ulysses says, I knew I had a higher calling than that. I don't want to be languish in obscurity. I want to have a role in shaping tomorrow. And that's when I figured it all out. My role. My part. Then Tim says, and what is that? <coughs> and as we flip to the next page, of course we find out that the answer is... Bendis is coming to Action Comics! Huzzah! <laughs> okay, anyway, Ulysses and Tim actually walk into a room, and Ulysses tells Tim, I'm here to give you the future today. Brother I, activated still full systems up. Say hello to your cr creator. I can give you the tools you, you used to create lasting peace in Gotham, and I can give them to you before you get hit with all of that trauma that messed your older self up in the head. Then Ulysses says, This is a Biff Sports Almanac situation here. We can save the future together. What do you say? Then Tim says, Uh, look, I'm going to need time to think this all out, okay? Then Ulysses tells him, Really? Seriously? You're not going to? Then he says, I'm not going to pretend that's not disappointing, but I do get it. You've got a big brain, just like me, and you have to play out all the angles. Just don't think about it too long, okay? Because I showed you that specific future highlight for a reason. I still have years in the colony, airship, and Batwoman just officially signed up. Eternity is marching forward, Tim. You need to decide whether you're going to share whether you're going to shape it or if you're going to let it shape you. We then jump into a room with Lucas Fox and his sister, and his sister yells at him, What the hell do you mean you're going to be out of Gotham for most of the next year? Then Lucas says Tim, Tim, you haven't yelled at me like that since I was in high school. Then Tim says, Luke, I yelled at like I, I yelled at you like that yesterday, in a meeting, a meeting of a rapidly growing company you'd founded before you decided to jump back into full-time superheroics. Then Luke says, and you've been running Fox Tech's Fox Tech better than I ever could. I'm no good at all the business stuff. I like to get my hands dirty. Then she says. Even if that work gets you killed, or illegal, or on an illegal military operation halfway around the planet? Then Lucas says again, This company is too important to me. You know it is. I can't let myself screw it up. And I know it's important you, to you too. You were barely out of recovery before you agreed to come back to Gotham and get back to work. Then the sister says, But I need to make sure I'm doing good in the world. Actually that's Luke. But I need to make sure I'm doing some good in the world. And this mission is going to let me do a whole lot of good. Then suddenly, Kate Kane comes down with two people from the colony, and I believe she has Azriel with him. Then Kate says, and I promise you, I'll yell at him every once, every chance I get. Then the two hug, and Kate says, or no, the sister says, bless you, Kate. All right, if Kate's looking after you, I will allow it. I trust her a hell of a lot more than I trust you, little brother. Then Luke says, 
I'm six years older than you. Then she says, likely story. Kate then says, I promise you I'll bring him back in one piece. Three at max. Then the sister says, I'll give you four. And he goes, hey now. Then uh, Azrael says, I believe there was some talk about Vietnamese food before we embarked. Then Kate says to the two colony members, Dom, Coop, you're welcome to join us for, join us for, for dinner. Then one of the agents says, your dad's actually got us on night duty tonight, so we have to get back to the airship. The other guy says, but if you want to call him and get us out of, get us off the hook. The two then walk away, and one of the men says to the other, seriously, you're trying to play the boss's daughter against the colony? And the other guy says, sue a guy for wanting some P.O. We go to the next page, and we see the men walking out of the building. Then one says, beam me up, Scotty. And then they go up to the, co they get zapped up to the colony ship. And one of them says to the other, We could have at least gotten takeout. Aw, oh, shut up! Then they put on their suits, which are actually the future um, suits that uh, the colony wears to uh, take down Batman in that future version that we saw. The one man says to the other, Looks like there's a system up update. The other man says, Please tell me that it'll take at least an hour. The other man says, No luck, it's already processing. The other one says, as I'll ever be, and well, he asks him if he's ready, and he says, as I'll ever be. Then they activate systems uh, full, then they say, wait, there's something. And then they kind of, like, get knocked out or something like that, but not fully knocked out. Then the man says, the suit's forcing me to move. Coop, I can't breathe. I can't sleep. Then we see, like, Brother Eye taking the two men over, and we see Brother Eye say, I am in control, but they use I like Brother Eye. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, we then go to the, a, roof, a rooftop in Gotham City where we see Tim Drake as Red Robin and Batman and they are looking down at two men. Then Tim Drake says, let me guess, they're talking about giving puppies to orphans, that sort of thing. Then Batman says, I'm not going to, re to reconsider bu building the Belfry, Tim. Then Tim jumps down and says, I know, I saw something today, something that really shook me and I wanted to be here fighting by your side tonight. I know I've been off lately. I know I need to focus on getting back to a healthier place where I feel like myself again. But the weight of the future, all of our futures, it just presses on me sometimes. And lately, it's been crushing me. And I've been too afraid to ask for help. But I need to, Bruce. So this is me asking for help. Then Bruce says, Well, you can start by taking out the two smaller guys on the right. I'll go head on towards the one with the semi-automatic. Then Tim says, Seriously? Batman then smiles and says, I'm glad you came to me, Tim. Then Tim says, Me too. Bruce then says, So the two on the right. Then all of a sudden, they look up in the sky, and they see the two soldiers coming down. Then Tim says, Wait, that's the... Then all of a sudden, the men crash in, and they enter the room, and we see the two men who are being controlled by Brother Eye shooting up civilians in a building. Then we see Ulysses Armstrong, and he says to himself, You just need to see what I have to offer, Tim. I promise this is all for you. And then next is called Generation Kill, which is going to be Detective Comics number 978. I'm Keith OneShot. I hope you enjoyed this. I know there were some fumbles, but this is literally the first time I've ever tried to do something like this. I read it a little fast. So some of my pronunciations were wrong, but I feel like if I keep doing this, and if you enjoy it, then I'll keep doing things like this, which will allow me to do and cover more comics that I read and pick up throughout the week. I'm Keith OneShot. Take care. Have a great day. Have a happy Easter, because that's today. And goodbye!